Hello friends, this video on respiration in plants part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us talk about gaseous exchange in plants. Now as in case of animals, for example human beings, we know that we take in oxygen and we give out carbon dioxide, right? Similarly, when you talk about plants, during the process of photosynthesis, we saw that they needed carbon dioxide. So they take in carbon dioxide and as a product of photosynthesis, oxygen was released. So carbon dioxide was taken in and oxygen was released. So in plants also gaseous exchange take place. Now, how do this exchange take place? For example, in animals, we have organs like lungs, but in plants, we don't have that. So how is the gaseous exchange facilitated in plants? So plants take in carbon dioxide for photosynthesis and give out oxygen. Now, when we talk about the process of respiration, it is just the opposite. In respiration, carbon dioxide is released. It is not an input, but it is an output. Whereas oxygen is an input for respiration. However, oxygen is not a mandatory uh, component or mandatory input for respiration. Respiration can even take place in absence of oxygen because there are many organisms which survive, which do not survive in presence of oxygen. They survive only in absence of oxygen. One of the examples is the bacteria. They undergo anaerobic respiration, that is respiration without oxygen. But then again, there is a difference between uh, respiration in presence of oxygen and in absence of oxygen. So right now, we are considering the respiration in presence of oxygen so there you take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide so that is why i told you right that these two processes photosynthesis and respiration they highly complement each other so now if you talk about uh, special organs in plants they do not have any specialized organs for gaseous exchange now the question is why? Why don't they have any specialized organs? Because if they don't have organs, then how are they able to do this gaseous exchange? Well, that is done through the openings or the tiny pores on the leaves called stomata, as well as through lengthy cells, which are again tiny pores present on the stems of plants. So stomata and lengthy cells, they facilitate gaseous exchange in plants. So now let us see why is it that they don't need specialized respiratory organs. Now if you talk about gaseous exchange in plants, the amount of gaseous exchange is very less when compared to animals. In plants, maximum exchange occurs only during the process of photosynthesis. It is not that all the time the organs are continuously exchanging gases. So photosynthesis, when they are performing photosynthesis, that is in presence of sunlight, that is the time when maximum gaseous exchange takes place. And that happens through stomata. Now some of the reasons why they don't need specialized organs are less transport of gases from one part to another. Now in a plant, if you look at different parts of the plant, we see that each part takes care of its own needs. For example, if you talk about the roots, roots, the exchange of gases and all those things happen by diffusion through the root hairs. So roots take care of their own. Again, if you talk about stems, they also have lenticels, cells, so they also do it on their own. Leaves, they have stomata, they do it on their own. So you really don't need to transport the gases from one corner of the plant to the other. So that distance of transport is not that huge. Also, the extent to which this transportation takes place, that is also less. As I said, maximum exchange takes place only during photosynthesis and not all the time. Again, the rate of respiration is quite lesser than in animals because uh, in plants, the demand of gases is quite less as such. Uh, however, high demands occur only during photosynthesis. And that too is met by the outputs of the respiration. That's because in respiration, whatever is the output, for example, carbon dioxide is an output in respiration. So the same thing becomes an input to photosynthesis. So suppose this is your respiration. So in respiration, carbon dioxide is an output. So this carbon dioxide becomes an input to photosynthesis. So even though there is a the demand is higher during the process of photosynthesis. Similarly, the supply is being provided internally. 
Transport is needed over smaller distances when compared to animals. Like in animals, you actually need to transport the gases from one corner of the body to the other. But in plants, that is not the case. For example, even if you consider a huge tree, even in this, that case, the living cells inside the plant body are quite close to each other because there are a lot of cells which are actually dead. They are just for the mechanical support in a plant. But if you talk about the living cells, they are not very far away from each other. In fact, if you talk about the stems of big plants there, the cells are arranged in thin layers and they also have lenticels for gaseous exchange. Therefore, it is like an interconnected network everywhere. So you do, there is no such part of the plant where there is no provision of gases exchange and the gas needs to be transported from over a large distance. So that is not the case. So because of all these reasons, plants really do not need a special respiratory organ. So they can manage with the small openings like stomata and lenticels to exchange gases whatever they need. So now that we got a brief idea about respiration, let us look at the overall equation of respiration. Now, as I mentioned, it is just the opposite of photosynthesis. So the equation is also going to be just the reverse of photosynthesis. Whatever was there on the product side in case of photosynthesis is going to be on the reactant side in respiration. So if you see here, glucose and oxygen, these two were the products for photosynthesis. But here they are the reactants and this combined. So the glucose basically gets oxidized to form carbon dioxide, water and energy. So this energy is very, very important as I mentioned before also. Because this is the energy which is going to get stored in ATP. So we are basically when we talk about the process of respiration, we are going to calculate how many molecules of ATP are getting produced because that is how we can measure the amount of energy being produced. Now, as I said here in this equation, you can see that oxygen is present. So this type of respiration, which takes place in presence of oxygen, that is known as aerobic respiration. However, not all organisms get oxygen. So even in absence of oxygen, the process of respiration can take place. Because see, if the process of respiration stops, what will happen? The organism will not be able to survive. Because if respiration does not take place, glucose will not get converted to energy. So basically, your body will not get any energy. And if you don't have any energy, then you cannot do any work and eventually you will die. You cannot do any work and none of the life processes inside your body will be able to function because everything needs energy and that's how the organism will die. Therefore, there has to be a provision uh, by which the process of respiration can take place even in absence of oxygen. So when respiration takes place in absence of oxygen, that type of respiration is known as anaerobic respiration. So broadly, these are the two types of respiration, aerobic and anaerobic. Now, if you compare the two respiration, you will see that the amount of energy which is produced in aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration, they vary greatly. So this respiration, even though here I have mentioned it as an, a single equation, but this is not a single step process. I already mentioned why it is not a single step process because if so much of energy gets released in one single step, there is a chance that a lot of it will get wasted in the form of heat. So if it is a multi-step process, so small, small amount of energy will get released in each step and those energies can be utilized for synthesis of ATP. So better utilization of energy will be there in a multi-step process. So this equation doesn't happen in one step, but there are several steps involved whereby which glucose gets converted to carbon dioxide, water and energy. This energy produced is utilized for ATP synthesis as I mentioned so now let us talk about the types of respiration. Now based on the presence or absence of oxygen, respiration can be broadly divided into two types, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration, as I said. 
So aerobic respiration is that type of respiration which occurs in presence of oxygen. So oxygen is mandatory for aerobic respiration to take place. So in this type of respiration, glucose or the food molecules get oxidized to produce carbon dioxide, water and energy. So one of examples of aer aerobic respiration where it takes place, one good example would be human beings. In human beings, we have aerobic respiration. If you talk about anaerobic, as the name says, anaerobic, so something which is not aerobic. So this type of respiration takes place in absence of oxygen because there are many organisms which live in an environment where there is no oxygen, but still they also need to respire. So there are again two types of anaerobes. One is facultative anaerobes and the other is obligate anaerobes. So these are the two types of anaerobes, that is organisms which undergo anaerobic respiration. So facultative anaerobes are those which are capable of growing in both presence and absence of oxygen. So it is like even if these organisms live in an environment where oxygen is there, they will be able to undergo respiration there also. So they will grow under aerobic conditions also. But if they are kept under anaerobic conditions, they will develop rapidly when compared to aerobic condition. So in absence of oxygen, they grow better than in presence of oxygen. So example of facultative anaerobes is a bacteria called E. coli, Escherichia coli, which you would have often heard of causing problems inside your intestine. So E. coli is known for that. Now if you talk about the obligate anaerobes, these are capable of growing only in absence of oxygen. So if you keep these anaerobes in uh, oxygen, they will get killed by the concentration of oxygen. So presence of oxygen can actually kill them. So they can respire only in absence of oxygen. Example of such anaerobes is Clostridium titani. This is another bacteria which is known to cause the disease called titanus. So these are the two types of respiration. Now when you talk about respiration in plants, in plants also both aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration can take place. So primarily we will talk about aerobic respiration because this is the type of respiration where a lot of energy is released. High amount of energy is released in aerobic respiration. So first we will... Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.